I joined Alpha Lambda Mu Sorority, and we've kept in touch. Our particular class has kept in touch all these years. We're celebrating our 70th anniversary this reunion year, and we had, I think one of the reasons we've kept in touch is because we've had a round robin, which is letters. We write, an individual would write a letter and put it in this envelope with other letters, and then they send it on. We had a list of pers people on the list, so we'd, we'd send it on to the next person who was to receive it, and she would write a new letter and take out her old and put it in, and it would go round and round. And it's still going after all these years. My husband um, got his doctorate at the University of Chicago, and I was a foods writer there, and I worked on educational material for the Serial Institute. Oh. And then when we came back to Vermont, <coughs> uh, I was doing freelance writing, mm -hmm. and um, I wrote for magazines and newspaper articles. Oh, very good. And then I became interested in the history of Richmond, and so I acquired a lot of knowledge, and so for our bicentennial, we thought we'd have a book, the Historical Society did, and they appointed a committee, and I was chair of the committee. It took so long that the committee kind of fell apart, although different members wrote it. This book is not just by me, but it was my responsibility to get it finished, and I did most a great lot of the work on it, too. Mm -hmm. So I would go to the original sources as much as I could find them, Fabulous. and uh, it did come out in 2007 when I was 88 years old. <laughs> I'm 92 now. <laughs> well, I became the university's first landscape architect. And after 31 plus years, I retired. And the irony of it is, is that two of our six kids, my daughter and two of her brothers, came to UMass and majored in environmental design, which is landscape architecture. And I said, why? Because dad, you have so damn much fun. And my daughter is now the acting town administrator and the first town planner ever for Truro on Cape Cod. And my two sons are retired Army colonels. And so that you never really know uh, what is going to happen. But the other thing is that the fun of uh, being the university's landscape architect, uh, when I get hurt in the Army spending many, many months at Walter Reed, uh, I was fascinated by the fact that back in the early 30s, about 1932, the general in charge of Walter Reed determined that they, they were taking care of victims of war. And so every square inch of Walter Reed was accessible. Ramps, you name it. You could go anywhere in a wheelchair and get there. And it was also fitted so that people who could no eyes or anything else, blind. But the main thing was accessibility. Well, all of a sudden, I come here. You know, I'm at UMass, and they, the federal laws come into effect. And you had the Americans before ADA came along. You had the old law, which wasn't as rigid, but things had to be made accessible. So therefore, what they did is started making the campus accessible. But how do you really know how to make the campus accessible? Because we had plans of everything. But how can a wheelchair get through certain doorways and anything else? I says, well, I came up with an idea. We invented a one credit course and any student that took it, we took kids with a design background and everything else. And the, they got, it's a one credit course, and by taking the course, they also got a tuition waiver for the semester. Now that's pretty good to get people to sign up on. And we had all the plans, and this troop of students with measuring devices and everything else, they went and measured up every single doorway of every single building on this campus. We then determined what had to be done to the building.
to make it accessible, where ramps had to be put in, where new entrances had to be put in, and everything else. And it worked. And UMass is now basically completely accessible to the disabled.